Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are reporting from the SDN World Congress 2016 here in The Hague in the Netherlands and I'm talking with three old chums of mine um, and delighted that they're here. Um, we're going to be talking about something that is either a problem or an opportunity and we're going to determine which is which are in the SDN WAN area and these are guys who know what they're talking on that. So let me introduce them. First of all, on my left, Andrew Coward, VP of Strategy at Brocade. Andrew, I haven't seen you since last night. That's right. <laughs> Nicholas Nico Fischbach, from, who's Strategy Architect and Innovation Director at Colt. Nico, I haven't seen you for at least 20 minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> and far on the left there, last but by no means least, Ari Banerjee, Senior Director of Strategy at Netcracker, and I haven't seen you for about an hour. Good to see you again. <laughs> again. <laughs> so, chaps, here, let's get let's go and get going on this. It seems to me from being at the show and interview, interviewing people here, that every year something bubbles to the surface, either as a problem or an opportunity. And I'm not quite sure what this is yet, so perhaps you'll enlighten me, but there seems to be a degree of fear and loathing in The Hague, as it were, about SD-WAN and the amount of disruption it's going to bring to a moderately settled order of things. So, Andrew, why is there this concern about SD-WAN to begin with? Yeah, well, I think the uh, industry has kind of been on this journey toward virtualization and NFE, and along comes SD-WAN, not delivered by service providers, but kind of delivered over the top. And as so many things that are delivered over the top are disruptive, this is kind of proving to be. And at essence is the fact that if service providers don't actually embrace SD-WAN and kind of co-opt it into their network infrastructure, um, there are literally billions of dollars of enterprise network connectivity revenue at stake. And so I think that's what's got everybody wild up. Yeah. So the question really is whether SD-WAN will end up as a standalone kind of entity through the course of 2017, or whether the industry is actually ready with NFE to bring those two things together, so bringing virtual CPE together with SD-WAN. Um, and obviously from a Brocade's perspective, that's what we expect and want to see, and that's where we're working with our partners and our customers to kind of execute. Okay. Nico, what about you? What's your take on this? Uh, my, my take on that one is that the, those bubbles you, you mentioned, you know, coming up, that actually for once, it's, it's a pretty cool shiny bubble, you know, and not the bubble is going to explode, you know. There's obviously risks, you know, to your point about, you know, revenue and, uh, you know, shifting revenue and even, you know, shrinking revenues in, in some spaces. But what we see from enterprises, I mean, clearly they want to relook at their network costs, especially when it comes to branch offices, uh, remote locations where, you know, just all the tails or third party tails are very expensive and they don't consume them uh, the way they want to. They're not flexible, they're very static and very costly. And, you know, what, what I've seen is exactly what you mentioned is this, this first view talking to customers that, you know, you service provider, I don't need you anymore because I'll do it myself. You know, there's enterprise solutions are there that provide SD-WAN. I'm going to deploy it, run it by myself. By the way, uh, you know, your IPv PN, you can shut it down in a couple of months, a couple of years from now. That's the first meeting. The second meeting is maybe tell me a little bit more about your, your SD-WAN proposition. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we could learn also from you a little bit. We've been talking to many of those enterprise players, um, but it seems complex. The third meeting is, please, pretty please help us. You know, could you actually help us and deliver a managed SD1 service that's nicely integrated with the existing IPVPN. So that's mm. kind of the journey most of the customers I've been talking to in the enterprise market, large enterprise segments and so, you know, finance verticals I've been going through. So do it yourself or do it ourselves. You know, we might need help. You know, can we evolve the managed network offering we have from you? That's what we see happening on, on the commercial front. And on the, on the technical front, it's you know, on top of virtual CP that you mentioned. You know, SD1 mm -hmm. to me is one of the real business propositions. Virtual CP is something that you get, but it's kind of hidden in infrastructure. SD-WAN is completely visible to the end user and the end customer. So, you know, for me, that is the perfect use case, the perfect business use case for, uh, for SD-WAN. And uh, on top of that, just, just yesterday here at the show, we've, we've released the, the called SD-WAN proposition to the market. So we, we went through the whole cycle of minimum viable product, field trials, and now we, we're going live with this and it's very much driven by customer demand. So the, the roadmap we had planned is completely evolving and being revamped based on uh, what those customers want now. Okay, Ari, what's Netcracker's position on this? Yeah, as we uh, work with our customers, one of the things we found out very, very quickly uh, in their progression towards a whole virtualized environment 
um, is the focus on enterprise services, which is not a surprise, right? This is the biggest segment for them, a lot of untapped potential. Mm. And uh, SD-WAN obviously plays a major role in that. It's a, it's a pretty disruptive technology on both ends. Uh, brings the cost down, as Nicholas just said, of the, you know, adding a node or a branch by nearly half or more, depending whom mm. you talk to. Um, for us, it's about enabling the operators to serve their enterprise customers much better. So um, some of the things that we launched here um, is the cloud marketplace, or what we call network as a service, which is really not just a, just the network as a service as we traditionally talk about, but so also about applications. And VNF as a service in an all like an app store kind of a model, which is built underneath our orchestration system as well as our other enabling blocks, helping operators commercialize. So. Um, we look at value-added service SDN becoming an enabler for some of those applications. How do you orchestrate that end-to-end? -end? How do you manage assurance? How do you manage quality of experience? Um, all of that becomes very, very crucial. Hybrid operations management, right? Um, and that's something we are bringing to the table uh, for, the, for the operators, helping them serve their enterprise customers better, make more money, be more sticky. Right, are you seeing, gentlemen, as individuals within your own companies, a move, a greater move to collaboration one for another, or is it still daggers drawn and we're not going to talk to you about this? Because it seems to me this is an issue that the service providers are going to be really concerned about. You know, one particular big European telco saying we stand to lose a, a, a billion dollar amount of revenue here from this unless it's handled properly, unless we get into it. Um, first of all, you, do you work together as technologists on this, helping them. How do you go about it? What do you do? Yeah, so the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Briefly, That's yeah. clear. Yeah. Um, I, I think to, to kind of talk, talk through the, the challenge, um, the, S, the pure SD WAN vendors who are going out, kind of running this over the top model, mm. actually have started a kind of resell model with yeah. a number of carriers. And that, that model is, is very um, dangerous, if you like, because essentially what happens is <laughs> You buy this SD-WAN product or resell it, and then the first thing that you do is you go buy services from two or three different carriers um, to right. make it work. Right. So by cooperation, what we mean is getting the orchestration and management of the single carrier to eff effectively reduce the cost massively, but offload the internet traffic and all the things that are, are, are non-business critical, and make sure the business critical applications get the services they need. Right. Um, and so you, you kind of mitigate the, the loss of the, t the traffic to your competitors yeah. and actually deliver a much more compelling service. And then to Ari's point, you can then layer on additional services on top of that. Mm. And that's where for us the virtual CPE model is really important to bring in because that's what enables these extra services to come along. You want to add security into this, you want to add um, one acceleration, you want to add you know, collapsing the four or five different boxes into one. Yeah along with SD-WAN's key. And then to, to Nicole's point about, you know, in terms of the conversation you have with customers, suddenly there's a, there's a value add discussion. So you may, you may lose on one side of the equation, but you've gained on the other, and you've had a reason to have a conversation and reset things. Yeah, I think that's perfectly true. I think you know, very, it's still very much being looked at as a pure network play, but more and more discussing with customers on RFPs, you see that you know, managed firewall is the next one. So the, the next, or ma some sort of managed firewall solution you know, is what um, you know, most of the enterprise wants to manage this, those endpoints, dream remote branches, and their you know, central policy management is going to be very helpful. So you can really help them, you know, um, you know, simplifying the way they manage their security policy globally. And, you know, service providers can be a little bit more back into this managed security service provider play by, you know, hosting those VNFs. So that, that makes total sense. So that's kind of the journey we see too. The, uh, the challenge though internally is, you know, SD1 is more than IPVPN, right, because of that. Mm. And it's not technology. I think I mentioned it a few times. I mean, it's clearly cross-functional cross teamwork internally. We, we had to completely rethink the way we, uh, we do workflow processes, supply chain, logistics, assurance for SD1 because it goes beyond the borders we usually operate in. You, you bypass the third party providers too because you know, the, 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 you know, the internet access might be local somewhere, might be hybrid with you know, internet and MPLS based. You have to deliver it, so the, your delivery workflow is completely different. I mean, it's it's not just bringing in a new CPE and saying we're going to do something over the top. All the backend processes. I mean, we probably spend as much time 
redoing our process in workflow internally to support SD-WAN, then actually the technology validation about building the compute stack, building the network equipment, validating the solution and so on. And then to your point, you need the uh, automation slash orchestration engine to, to be able to do that. Right? And today there aren't that many solutions out there and, and you look at it, you know, we started kind of pretty nimble when it comes to OSS and orchestration and it's okay because we just launched this, we're growing, but we know that, you know, once you, you go ahead full steam and this is, you know, day-to-day -day operations, we need something else, this kind of building block missing in the stack around our orchestration. It's so. an enormously complex problem though, isn't it? I mean, there are so many facets to this that, that can go wrong and, and cause difficulties. Um, you mentioned, uh, Andrew, earlier that you know, the big focus on SD-WAN with or without virtual CPE. What's it shaking out as? Is, is, has, has any sort of decision been made collectively in the industry whether you need VCP with this or not, or whether you can manage with, simply with SD-WAN? I think well, it, it, these are kind of slow trains, fast trains discussion, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So the VCP thing has been on a, on a track for, uh, for the last 18 months yeah. or so. You're going like the clappers, yeah. And <laughs> well, and then the SD-WAN has, kind of, yeah. uh, has now um, created this huge sense of urgency yeah. um, for, from a business imperative perspective. So depending on the carrier and, and how to the cultural point that you kind of make about how, you know, whether or not they've got the right point, whether or not the carrier individually can make the two things converge mm. from day one, or whether there'll be this overlap. And as we said, the danger with the overlap, uh, with having two different solutions essentially, is that you risk bleeding the revenue out to exactly. your competitors through that process. When you speak, to, sorry, you I, think, I think to me, you know, the, the two blend, you know, when we look at what we did, because we've been doing virtual CP since like late 2012, SD-1 is coming now, and to me, the SD-1 proposition, the VNF elements and the virtual CP, they, they are blending so much together that, you know, you're going to have some forms of service chaining in between, but it's, it's very tightly linked and coupled, in, in my opinion. So, you know, you could have virtual CP by itself, obviously, but you know, I think SD WAN is is building at least for for us at Call is building very much on what we do with virtual CP. I, I wouldn't see it as two kind of tr two trains or two tracks. Yeah, well, not for you, but then yeah, for us maybe. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there are certain operators like Call who have taken these step towards virtualization way in advance, and there are others who are chugging along like the steam engine. So it takes them a little <laughs> bit of time to pick up. Um, so um, one of the things we talk about is whether you're starting over the top as IPB and you're providing those value-added services, or you're using SD-WAN, or you're using an enterprise VCP and SD-WAN to different white box, if, as we say. Um, the applications, the value-added services, the underlying things that Nick, you talked about, right? How do you manage this? Is it tremendously complex to add and layer more and more services on top of it? If that's the case, then we might as well go back to the physical world because that's what used to happen, right? Yeah. We can do a service launch in 12 to 15 months. Mm. You got to optimize that. Time to market needs to go down. It needs to be a factory environment and cooperation. You talked about that. I think it's about vendors and operators, but it's also among vendors, right? Yeah. I mean, ecosystem of partnership, working with each other, onboarding them as many as possible so that when you can do quick time to market, um, and helping your operator customers at the end. I think that's where we see the market heading as well, from a partnership angle between vendor to vendor, who are previously competitors, working with each other in many cases. A final question to you, because we're running out of time, but um, you talked about you know, an element missing from the stack and so on. Is there an SD mono solution or something equivalent to it out there, or is that the glaring hole in the middle of it all? I think we need to look at you now. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you passed the button. Yeah, that's no, like the hot potato is with you now. Thank you. I think at the end, if you think about it, be it in the old world of you know physical network functions, or now we are now meeting in a hybrid world, your orchestration should system should be able to manage, you know, whatever the underlying layers are, whether it's physical network functions, whether it's virtual network functions, you should be able to instantiate a virtual physical network resource if you need to, or a virtual whether it's on a virtual CP, with an end device, whatever that end device might be. If you start going on the route that I'm going to have a specialized SD-WAN orchestrator, I'm going to have a specialized this orchestrator, you're creating the jungle again. Exactly right. It's, it's, people believe that SD-WAN is like this, this separate entity. All that SD-WAN really is is a set of business logic Correct. that rides off a set of features that exist at CP Absolutely. and across the network and so on. And I guess your job is to execute that business logic. Make the choreography happen right. at the right time, 
and instantiate the right resource, hide the complexity from the end user. End but user doesn't want it. But I think, you know, that's probably true if you can go somehow greenfield, you know, brown, somewhere between brownfield and greenfield. But when we started early, we had to, if you remember this Novitas architecture slide, I've probably shown, you know, way yeah. too many times. We have, you know, a per network domain or per data domain Correct. orchestrator or some sort of automation engine, and we build our own Novitas choreography engine on top, mm -hmm. because that was the way. You know, if you have the opportunity to do Big Bang, you know, and replace all of it, then I'm with you. But it's, it's a massive investment. I mean, we're just doing, we're just, you know, part of, uh, part of the journey where we're looking at OSS stack as a whole. It, it is a journey which is long, more complex, because there's so many inter interface into business processes, mm -hmm. uh, workflows, and so on. And you know the network wants to move fast. It's kind of moving fast now. And OSS is still, you know, to your steam train, you know, thing is, you have the uh, t French TGV on this one, and you know, below that you have the steam train. How do you make this one faster? Do you, you know, tack on? I mean, that, that's a challenge I see. So one of the things I agree with you, by the way. Uh, one of the things what what we see is you start off with we have seen a lot of our customers start off with virtualization, automate that, and then then slowly not you know bring together certain functions from the physical network side, offset one by one, and start to move those functions to the newer orchestration systems, rather than going full bang, big bang, which is a huge OSS transformation, which people don't want to do. Um, so we're seeing people starting from different sides. Yeah, I think uh, the so other thing I kind of linked to that is that the carriers may not execute in their home market first. They quite, may find it easier yeah. to execute and almost do a kind of Viking raid yeah. on somebody <laughs> else's territory. <laughs> Um, with new technology the disrupt. Did get to the Hague? They probably did. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, kind of take it, t take it from there and then learn those lessons and bring them back home. Right. I would maybe tend to disagree on that one yeah. Yeah, because our customers, I mean, most of them, they don't want the pure over-the-top solution or kind of the internet-only use case. Right. They want this combination of MPLS prior wire plus internet and best of both worlds. So, you know, we, we are actually starting in our home market or home yeah. markets and expanding the other way. Because the OTT play, every, they can do it by themselves if they really want to, but what they're actually asking us for is you know, the, the reliability, reliability and the quality of service you get from MPLS, plus the flexibility and the lower cost from internet. So I think this use case, which is actually more complex, is actually the top one use case we, we get to hear from customers. But I'd also argue you're a disruptor in your own home markets. For those reasons, yeah, you, you've, yeah. you've been ahead of the but curve. Right? To your very, very early point, you know, it's that's the thing. It's this revenue at risk, and you know, it's. I think it's actually positive that even the portfolio teams realize that you have to disrupt yourself a little bit to uh, to avoid, you know, cannibalization of revenue. Gentlemen, we have running. We've run out of time. We've we've run over time. But very, very interesting stuff. It'll be fascinating what, to see what happens, what plays out over the next twelve months and the next one of these such meetings. Let's. I'm very intrigued to find out what's going to happen. But in the meantime, Ari Banerjee, Nicholas Fishbach, and Andrew Coward, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you.